censorship and deplatforming doesn't just happen online, it happens in real life too. In fact, often leftist thugs threaten violence to any theater, any meeting room that dares let a conservative or even just an alternative voice have a get together. And today, the current victim of deplatforming is our friend, Fellow McAleer. He's a playwright and a filmmaker, and he's got this great idea called verbatim theater, where in particular cases he has actors read out actual lines from transcripts in court or historical events of great controversy. It's not fiction, it's just selected readings from the truth, from real life. And so he had pledged to go ahead with a, a play called FBI Lovebirds Undercovers. It was about the FBI uh, lovebirds, uh, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, who conspired to undo Donald Trump. It was a reading of their text messages that were revealed, and he had two big name actors lined up for it. Dean Kane, known to many Americans as having played the role of Superman, and Christy Swanson, who played Buffy the Vampire Slayer. These are not minor actors, this is a great story. Well, it was all set to go until, well, I'll let Felham himself tell you what happened. He joins us now via Skype. Felham, great to see you again. Welcome to the show. Did I accurately describe your play called um, FBI Lovebirds Undercovers? Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's their text messages, their glorious, lover uh, uh, anti-Trump text messages, but also what we've done is they were grilled for a couple of days uh, in private congressional hearings. The transcripts of those have just been released. So I've melded their text with the grilling they got about those texts and their pathetic defenses of them. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, so, and then, you know, we were all set to the play. We had a venue uh, booked in DC and the thing was, we're gonna film it and release it online afterwards. Uh, it was just them reading their text, acting out their text, uh, acting out the, the Q&A from, from congressmen. And, you know, they didn't, the, the resistance didn't look well. You know, they, they, they were obviously plotting to undermine Trump. As, as Trump says, they were, you know, struck at one said, stage says, well, it looked like Trump was gonna get elected. We need to start the insurance policy. And that's when they started the Russia investigation. Uh, at one stage, Page says, he's not going to get elected, is he? And, and Strzok says, no, we will stop it. This is the head of FBI counterintelligence right. saying we're going to stop a, a, a democratic decision. So we were all set for this very interesting play to release it online. Then, on Tuesday, got the word from the theater in D.C., we are canceling your booking, even though we have a signed contract, because we don't like the truth, because they can't handle the truth. Well, I, now I want to zero in on this. I don't think the theater has an excuse to cancel it. If they were getting violent threats from Antifa or whatnot, the proper answer is to work to get security, either Washington, D.C. police or even private security, you can fix a security threat. It's Washington. It's one of the most highly guarded, highly policed cities in America. There's a way to solve a problem of a threat. Did they throw you under the bus? Was it a real threat or was it the theater themselves that got cold? The only, the only threat that exists, the only threat that exists is one guy on Twitter who said something and when he was called out on, he deleted the threat. That's it. Story over. Now, this is an excuse by cowardly hypocrites, by the theater set, who, who keep giving themselves awards for bravery. Yeah. They keep telling themselves how brave they are and give speeches about how brave they are. No, you're brave. No, you're braver. I'm braver. No, you're braver. And then the first, and, and you should read the uh, studio theater, the Mead Theater's uh, website. You know, we're going to challenge ideas and challenge assumptions and bring fresh ideas. And the first time somebody challenges assumptions, the first time somebody makes them think again, they are cowards. Yeah. They are hypocrites. Well, and it's this not, is who they are. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest. And then I end by reading my hate mail, but you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at the rebel.media slash shows.